everyone, hello, and this is Majesty Sussex Report. I'm Antonio, and it's an absolute pleasure to have you here. Thank you for spending some of your valuable time with us. Ah, how are you all doing? <laughs> I'll tell you how I'm doing. I can't stop eating, and it's a problem because, as I said before, um, yeah, none of my normal pants fit. <laughs> so, oh, yeah, yeah. I know so much of it is just stress eating, but I can't help it. One of the things that I have, I don't know if any, any of you like this, but as of late, I've started buying salted crackers, like little, yeah, salted crackers, basically. And I have an entire bag or row or whatever of the salted crackers and a, 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 a whole thing of butter. And <laughs> I just sit there and eat the entire thing. And the funny part is that, well, it's not funny, but it, it's, it's that once I finish the whole packet, I, I know there's three more because it comes in a box and there's four packages of, of it. I know there's three more. And I swear to you, like the next hour, because I, I have to sort of conquer the first hour. So that entire hour, my, my head, my brain, all I keep thinking, crackers, crackers and butter, crackers and butter. It's so good. <laughs> Am I the only weirdo that likes crackers and butter? I, I, I also, I was telling this, I told this to someone a while ago um, when we moved here. And I used to love, love, love green mangoes. So green mangoes with pepper and salt. Like my favorite thing to have like on a beach well besides really great fry fish but green <laughs> mangoes with pepper and salt favorite thing <sighs> so i guess i shouldn't be talking about my you know one's one's um, waistline increasing because it sits Thanksgiving and how how is everyone feeling about Thanksgiving? Let me let me tell you. <laughs> I love it. Let me tell you. I think in an odd way, if you really go back and look at what Thanksgiving really means or how it started or any of that, like it's not it's not this cheerful, happy thing, right? And as we know, history is written a certain way. So only God knows what really happened. So I, I however, we, we, are, we are here today and it's a day of being grateful for what you've got, uh, being thankful for the things that are in your life and to look forward with hope. I know many of you, many of us, you know, this is a time where it's, it's quite challenging, especially if you've got members in your family that may not um, coincide with your point of views politically or otherwise. And I realized something a little while ago, and this is, this is just for me, right? Take it with a grain of salt. Um, if it works for you, please take it. And if you think I'm just full of nonsense, then I'm full of nonsense. But I realized that when I would get into a discussion, because I go into discussions honestly with the idea that either challenge me so I can I, I can I can change my my opinion, right? I want you to challenge me on it because if you challenge me on it, that means that there's new information that you possibly have that I may not be aware of. So I actually relish the opportunity. But I realized that 
it was very one-sided. I relish the opportunity to have an open dialogue conversation, but many times the other person, no matter what I said, no, ma no matter what kind of evidence I, I showed or co contradictions in their own, own, own story, they just were like, no, that, that, this is my point and that's it. And I found myself just getting all worked up about it, getting quite angry about it. I mean, not, not angry as an explosive angry, but just kind of frustrated because I, I, I couldn't fathom how they could still hold, excuse me, the, the, the opinion or thought that they were holding. And I, I'm, I'm showing them the evidence. I realized that they didn't care. They already had formulated their thought. And no matter what I said or showed or did, they weren't going to change their minds because it was convenient for them to hold the thought that they were holding. I, 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 I said to my parents a little while ago, sorry, I had, I'm, I'm thinking quickly what I want to... I think I've I think I've said this before, so I'm gonna just say it. I said to my parents a little while ago, I said, I don't know how much more time we've got. I really don't. Right? And that has nothing to do with age or anything like that. We just really don't know. Life changes by the second. And especially with th that whole thing that happened here in my building, um, the other day, you know, things happen so rapidly. So I said to to them, we were we were um, headed on holidays, and something was either bother, um, was bothering my, my 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 dad or it was my mom. I don't remember quite whom it was um, bothering. And I said, "Listen, I don't know how much time we've got." I really don't, but I would like, I would appreciate that the time that we spend together, we make every effort for it to create memories of joy, of happiness, because when I'm gone or when you're gone, I would like, and I hope you would like to be able to tap back into those moments and for a smile to come to your face because they would be moments of, of joy and happiness rather than arguing over something really stupid. Because the stupidity that one encounters many times is absolutely mind boggling to me. And I never want to waste my time, my my energy, the amount of life I've got left that God has granted me in number one, people who don't have anything valuable to, to bring to the conversation, people who are always angry, people who are always looking for the worst, I want to spend my time creating joy and happiness as much as I can and with the people that I love. I'm not saying that that is, that is running away from problems or anything like that, not at all, but let's create moments of joy. So you make it clear and you just say, look, I am in my era of joy and happiness and I will not accept anyone interrupting that joy and happiness. So in this Thanksgiving, we're going to be joyful and we're going to be happy. That's it. Okay. Okay. And if you don't like it, there's the door. <laughs> oh boy. Okay. I've got so much stuff to Isabel, I admire your bravery to speak away. about things that matter to you. Always remain courageous. Doshima, so majestic, ever so majestic. 
Don't do you have such a calming presence? I feel safe around you. Everyone feels safe around you. How do you do that? Natural. It's natural. I like it. Give me that. Well done. Go have a great week. Mr. Reliable. Well done. I mean, it's easy to find people that depend on others. It's hard to find people to rely on. You are Mr. Reliable. Thank you. Ever since you became a prefect here. Well done. Good morning. Abigail. Some teachers make their students better, but some students make their teachers better. I feel like you make your teachers better. That is good. You reduce their work. You make their work easy. Everybody would want to teach you. You're very teachable and a great listener. I admire it. You want to have a great year. This is going to be the best one. You already have high and lofty standards, but you're going to even go beyond that. Have a great day. Here's what I tell you yesterday. What I say about your speech and how you speak. It's nice and you are such an eloquent speaker. It is incredible. Every time you speak, it's just so like captivating. You captivate an audience. You have that ability. Incredible. Ma, how are you? Roses are red. Violets are blue. This is Sora Heights, and we're happy to have you. <laughs> uh, oh, Betos, you don't look so sleepy today. <laughs> what happened? You're alive. You're well. I feel like you make your parents even better parents. You make me a better person. <laughs> the joy of the Lord is your strength. I'm going to pray for peace. Okay? Come here. God in heaven, I pray for the peace of God that passes all understanding for Petros this day. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All oh, go we'll have the most peaceful day ever. <laughs> so, <laughs> the first time I um, I watched that, I you can just imagine. I got teary-eyed and teary-eyed right now because as an educator, as a, as, as a teacher, I, kids are trying their very darn best, but there's so many circumstances that are against them, especially, especially Black kids, kids of color, minorities who are in areas that might not be the best to give them the right support that many times they need. And sometimes just providing them with some positive words. I'm not going to say it's enough. But it's like a little seed, at least, that you've helped plant that in a moment of doubt or in a moment where crucial decisions may have to be made. That seed, that, 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 those words that, you, that they heard from you might just make the difference. So watching this just... Number one, it broke me. <laughs> and number two, it made me uh, miss teaching. Um, but, oh boy, it is um, to, get, to have great teachers. And, um, okay. Let's get on with our royal stuff. <laughs> okay, so let's start it with this one. So guess how much it cost the taxpayers of the United Kingdom, Great Britain, um, in regards to the coronation. How much do you think? I'm giving you th three options here. Um, and remember, this was a reduced, reduced coronation. So it wasn't the full on thing, according to them. This was a reduced penny pension coronation. So, choice number one, 
10 million pounds. 10 million pounds going once, twice. No, no one has taken 10 million pounds. Okay. Um, let's go for uh, 65 million pounds. Anyone? 65 million pounds over there. Yes, yes. I, I see the lady. Okay. Another one. Okay, one. Okay. We have three people at 60. Did I say 69? Oh boy, sometimes I wonder about me, I really do. Last option, 72 million pounds. Oh, 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 all of you, my goodness. Yes, 72 million pounds. That's the equivalent of approximately 91 million dollars. And that was the reduced coronation. Reduced, remember. Reduced. And I bet you anything that that is not the true number. That is most likely higher than that. Probably a lot higher than that. And that comes out out of your tax dollars. Sorry, tax pounds. <laughs> it is, it, it, oh man. These are billionaires. And you're not able to heat your home. And it's the seniors, the seniors who also support this nonsense. Look, don't get me wrong. I like pageant, pageantry. I, I, I like all that stuff. I enjoy it. I love it. But not at 72 million pounds. No. Not at all. Especially when they're telling everyone you need to tighten your belt, pull up your socks. Gosh. All for what? To put to put a crown on his head and her head? With diamonds that were stolen? I mean, he doesn't care. Do you really think he cares? And this whole nonsense about, well, it's not nonsense, but, oh, um, cor coronation food banks. Coronation food banks. Can you believe it? In the United Kingdom, coronation food banks. I think I don't even remember the number anymore because I, I a, a few years, not even a few years, maybe before the freaking Tories, but they, 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 they were like just a handful of, of food banks in the UK. Now there's like thousands. And that doesn't give people like a moment to stop and think and the richer are getting even richer and still you want to support you still want to give your support to these people well your choice 72 million pounds and that's not even what it really probably is. Wow. Here's our next story. The documentary. Um, I just had an idea. <laughs> Can you? Did Channel 4, right? Did they, did they just put this documentary about the wicked stepmother to coincide with wicked? The, the the movie that is out right now because that movie is breaking all box office like crazy but <laughs> did they do that on purpose like I'm not sure but anyways so it's just awful 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 I'll, I'll tell you the second the second it started and I saw the people who they they had used and they're all royal commentators, <laughs> you know. 
latrine and 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 the other one and the other one and that other one and the petroleum one and whatever i was like yeah this is not going to be some kind of truth telling or anything this is just a quip or quo or something because they tried to appear to be balanced but there was nothing balanced about that nothing 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 balanced about it oh yeah all right next story okay this is great this story is going to lead into a whole other um floodgate of other story so it was announced that Prince Harry will be speaking or interviewed at the um, Deal Book Summit in New York City on uh, December f- December fourth, I think it is. And uh, this this is absolutely great. I mean, look look at the other speakers, right? Being in that kind of company is great. It's top tier, my friends. So no matter what they continue to say in those tabloids and in those. Um, uh, so-called informational shows or whatever it is about the royals um, talking about how Harry and Meghan and, and are, are D-list and E-list and F-list and whatever list. Look, the Sussexes are doing their thing. They're in demand, on demand. So we have proof. Our proof is in the pudding. Well, all you have are made up words, made up stories of fantasy. So he's going to be there um, December 4th. And this is the same, uh, I think when it is in 2021, that Megan um, was interviewed. And um, she was talking about minding the gap in regards to um, finances, um, women, especially in an industrialized nation like the U.S., one of the only ones where um, people don't get maternity leave or, or paid maternity leave, which is just horrible. So this is fantastic. So Prince Harry following the footsteps of his wife. Uh, this is great. But this leads into a whole other narrative that um, the tabloids and all of those people have had because they've never before ever in their lifetime ever heard of a couple right who are professionals who are have businesses ever do business away from each other or separate from each other or in different countries or in different um uh zip codes or something so to them it's just this uh so every every like i looked into my inbox in regards to the alerts that i get and perhaps 80 percent of it was all about and they're going to be separate again it's been 177 days since they've we've they're different seen together blah 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 and i'm going what the heck is wrong with these people i mean really what is wrong with you people? And um, this is going to lead nicely into an article written by um, from um, us from Australia. So another really investigative, hard hidden journalistic integrity. Um, amazingly discovering the truth in this heavy hidden article written by Daniela Elser. In other words, a manufactured narrative from Murdoch Media. Welcome. So once again, Daniela Elser has churned out another inflammatory article under the Murdoch Media banner designed to sow doubt and sensationalize every move Prince Harry and Meghan Markle make. Let's let's be clear, just in case I wasn't, this is not journalism. It's a coordinated attack driven by Rupert Murdoch's ongoing vendetta against the Sussexes, fueled by their legal battles with his media empire in the UK. Here is, here is why her latest piece is riddled with hypocrisy, misinformation, and blatant bias. 
The article gleefully paints Harry and Meghan's separate appearances as evidence of a marital <laughs> marital riff. While similar behavior by the Wellses is conveniently ignored, right? We don't, we don't. When when they do things separately, oh gosh, no, 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 no. That it, it, it's, it's not a hint of anything. When 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 he walks away from her or gets impatient and uh, no, that 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 means nothing at all, at all. It's just very human of them. Oh 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 oh! By the way. I forgot about this. She has kids, right? Right? No, 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 no. The white one, the real princess. She has kids that she has to raise. So when they do things separately, it's justifiable. Oh, no, 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 no. Megan? Oh, she has two kids? Are you sure? freaking idiots so Prince William and Kate as we know often undertake separate engagements sometimes even weeks apart yet no one jumps to declare their marriage on the rocks even though hink hink I mean wink wink the double standard is is is, is glaring and Readers should see through the selective outrage. Even the references of the whale situation, quote unquote, pre cancer, before the announcement of Kate's health concerns, reeks of an unnecessary dig to justify their imbalance in coverage. Professional couples attending separate events is normal but for harry and megan it's weaponized as a scandal it's scandalous elsa peace strives on innuendos and unfounded speculation the idea of a pr collision or that the sussex versus sussex this is the new thing now. Sussex versus Sussex is freaking laughable and baseless. Listen, professionals often have commitments that don't <laughs> that, that don't overlap. This doesn't spell a crisis. Okay, it's just the reality of 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 professional life. A additionally, oh, sorry, I, I'm just like sometimes so, 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 like I can't even believe that people read this stuff and they actually believe it, right? So, her mockery of the Sussexes scheduling clashes. Just, it just definitely demonstrates a willful ignorance again of how external organizations set event dates. Look, it's very simple. I understand that both Harry and Meghan, you know, thought that they would attend the honor for um, Mr. Mr. Perry uh, together, right, at the at the Palais um, the Palais Awards. Um, but when another opportunity comes up in order for them to get more exposure, right? And, and if, if there is compensation also for it, why wouldn't they do, you know, you go do that and I'll go do this. Makes complete sense to me, but not to them. So... This whole thing about their schedules are clashing. Listen, Harry and Meghan live what, I mean, forget the whole mansion and everything. They, they, they seem to live a pretty normal life. They sleep in the same bed as far as we know. I mean, they have a desk where they have laptops close to each other. 
So when you say their schedules clash and the Sussex versus Sussex and the PR teams, they don't have two different PR teams, my dear. Like the others. Why don't you look into the others? Claims like Harry has been seen looking happy again without Megan are designed to provoke controversy where zero, where none exist. Such language mirrors the tabloid playbook. It highlights a trivial observation inflated with, 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 with suspicion and hope readers buy, bite to the stupid bait. The article conveniently omits the wider significance of the events both Harry and Meghan are attending. Prince Harry's appearance at the Deal Book Summit places him among global leaders discussing critical issues. While Megan, Megan's honor, right, for Tyler Perry at the Palais Center celebrates, celebrates Tyler Perry and all that he has accomplished. Both of them don't need to be there, right? This is the way how connections are made, network is made. This is the way people at that level navigate the world. You may not be familiar with that. This is them achieving things and doing things, right? Divide and conquer. Instead of celebrating that, their individual achievements, Elsa trivializes them to advance a narrative of conflict. Again, I've said this before, I've never seen an entire media machinery wish and hope that this couple divorces or in, are, are in trouble. I've never seen it, like, like, like actively hoping that this is the case. And, 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 and then there, there's this, this outright error um, regarding Scotty's um, little soldiers. Megan's absence was neither unusual nor noteworthy. Harry has consistently supported this charity. And her presence was never part of the event plan. So this fabricated critique is just another attempt to stir up unwanted controversy. Also, moron, if you would do some your, your own freaking research, Harry has said very clearly, he will not bring his wife back to the UK because of security reasons. I mean, how do you people write this crap? Because there's no, there's no intention of even sort of putting icing on your inability to, to do a little bit of research or to factually check yourself. Readers must understand that this article is part of a larger Murdoch-driven narrative with Harry and Meghan, especially Harry, locked in legal battle against the publisher of The Sun. It is no surprise that Murdoch-owned outlets worldwide, worldwide, are doubling down on their efforts to tarnish the Sussex's reputation. From the sun in the UK to articles like this one in Australia, the pattern is unmistakable. This isn't about in, 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 in informing readers. It's about manufacturing disdain. Murdoch's media empire has a long history of targeted individuals who challenge its power, and the Sussexes are no exception. 
Articles like this rely on readers not questioning the motives behind them. Why is there such an obsession with scrutinizing Harry and Meghan's every move? Why are similar behaviors by other royals overlooked? And why does Murdoch Media dedicate so much energy to push in these narratives? The answer lies in power, control, and a desperate attempt to protect the status quo. Elser's article isn't journalism. It's a smear piece masquerading as commentary. Don't let the tabloid tactics fool you. Instead, see this for what it is. Another chapter in Murdoch's global vendetta against the Sussexes. For anyone who's pro who will listen to this or, see, or watch this, who's not a squaddy or not part of a uh, of Sussex squad or is, is on the fence about the Sussexes, let me tell you, I, 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 I hope you have a critical mind and you're able to reject this toxic cycle of hate and double standards and hold media outlets accountable for their role in shaping divisive narrative. The truth deserves better. It's people like this that are fermenting and have created the world we're living in today. Of this, and of, why? Why is everyone so divisive? The country is so divided. The people are so divided. Why the freak do you think it is? We have these billionaires in the UK, in Australia, in the US. I'm telling you, in Canada, knock on, 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 on pieces of wood. As far as I know, Murdoch doesn't own any of the media outlets here. But we did we did have an attempt. There, there was there was this uh, actually we're not even gonna go into that. But do people not stop and wonder? Why? Why is it? You know, I've, I've, I've read enough to know the, 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 the sadness about how people are so easily manipulated. In war after war, tragedy after tragedy, you'll have two neighbors of, 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 of different religion or different um, um, backgrounds who have, who've lived on the same land for years, seeing their kids grow up. And then you have some evil, evil person come along and will just start to ferment hate. And next thing you know, the neighbor who, who, who you used to break bread with is at your door with, with, with a machete or, or gun or, or oh it's just and these people who write this nonsense they wash their hands of it you know I understand that people need to make a living I get it I get it and I know I, I can sit here and, and say no I, I wouldn't but I will, I'll say this, I will do everything, I will do everything in my power. No fame, no fortune would make me sit there and write falsehoods, create and invent and create innuendos just to collect a paycheck. Knowing very well that 
behind all of this, I'm making people believe a certain narrative. I am fomenting hatred. Pathetic. Absolutely pathetic. As you know, the court case against um, the Sun Murdoch Media that is scheduled for next year, early next year, I think either late February, uh, sorry, January, January, um, February time. And um, uh, uh, recently, um, data has been set out for the case that um, Prince Harry has against the um, Daily Mail or the Daily Fail. Um, the thing that, that amazes me with all of this is how the system in the UK is set up to... It, it, it just seems so corrupt. I'll, 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 this, this is just honesty here, right? The system, we know, we know that a lot of these systems are not set up for, to provide real justice. It's a miracle when it happens, especially against powerful people. But for it to be so blatant, right? Prince Harry and other high-profile British figures, private um, privacy lawsuit against the UK Daily Mail newspapers publisher will go to trial in early 2026. The decision was made by London High Court on Tuesday with the party's legal cost set to exceed 30 Eight million pounds. Thirty-eight million pounds. Harry, the youngest son of King Ch King Charles, is one of the seven claimants um, suing Associated Newspapers over allegations of voicemail interception, commonly known as phone hacking, and other um, serious privacy breaches dating back. 30 years. Associate, uh, Associated, which also publishes the Mail on Sunday, has always denied involvement in unlawful practices. I, like, how does someone who, who, who doesn't have that kind of money like even has a chance because the way the system is set up, if Mail on Sunday or, or the Daily Fail comes and they say, we will give you, we will negotiate with you and we will give you half a million pounds and you say no to that, and you take it to court, and if the court awards you four hundred ninety-nine nine 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 a penny, a pence, less than half a million, even though you won, you have to pay the legal fees for both sides because you should have taken the deal. I mean, I'm sure someone, when they came up with this, they were just like, no, we're trying to save time in the court and, and to cases to move faster. But do you see, do you see how this is not a good thing? Did anyone not think, look, this, this, there must be some kind of like, you, you know, an amendment to this situation. Why the freak do you think that people don't, don't, don't even quite know the kind of damage that Murdoch and his newspapers and the media conglomerates that he controlled? I watched Sky Australia the other day and I swear I was going to take a freaking something to my, to my brain. Like, the people who work for this organization, who have to first and foremost sell their soul, because you have to voluntarily give your soul. So they voluntarily give their soul to this thing. 
and become just the, the purveyors of chaos and damn right evil. It's, it's just, you have these people and I, I, they sit there and they laugh about, they, they, they make a mockery about people. They laugh at situations that, that one shouldn't be laughing about. They are void of any empathy, of any humanity. We see it on Fox News, we, 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 we see it in, in the UK, we, we see it in Australia. Like, like what is, it? it's like the big evil Lord, allegedly, that just goes around the world in these places and harness all the evil people, all the people that are willing to sell their soul to do this kind of work. I, I, once again, I understand that one has to pay bills and one wants a career, one wants to do the job that, that, that you went to, to university or college for, or that you've trained in. I get it. And I know it's very easy for a person like me, again, sitting here, who doesn't have to confront that kind of dilemma in my life presently, that I can sit in my high horses and say, well, I wouldn't do that. Look, I don't know people's situation. I don't. And I would hope that I wouldn't do that. But it, it just seems that they really honestly get joy out of people's punishment and people's misery joy out of it. It is sickening, absolutely sickening. And I, I, it, it, it's also so weird from, to me that, that it, it's not until next, that, that, uh, 2026, an entire year for what's, what's this, Rotomir or whatever, to just pump out more and more and more lies and, 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 and harmful narratives and this crap that they're going to continue to do and intensify. It is just, I don't understand how we expect fairness in society when it's so blatantly everything is set up a certain way to benefit very, very few people. Very few. I don't care if the queen or the king won't invite me back to Buckingham Palace or if I behave that way at the Ritz. It's such a fundamental part of the work I do at the center as a trauma-informed yoga teacher. In order to heal, I had to begin feeling my feelings, which allowed me to hear my own voice. So I'm not really interested in the performance of the manners. I remember I was home once in Hong Kong, back from boarding school at the club, and I leaned over to smell the pudding as they were serving it. And mummy sent me away from the table for being rude. And as I was walking away, I remember seeing this self-congratulatory look on mummy's face in front of all the other so-called adults. Who was she trying to impress? What is wrong with smelling pudding? Mummy thinks everyone's judging her by extension, her children. And of course, she ends up judging everyone else. What is so fragile in one's ego that one can't cope with not doing what everyone thinks one should be doing? So many of these socially demanded, polite behaviors grind you down to becoming a person who wouldn't say boo to a goose. At boarding school, we had a teacher, the horse mistress, Mrs. Pincher. She was a wizened old crow. Even the headmistress was terrified of her. She would say, would you do that at home? And if you said, yeah, she'd say, well, you don't do it here. And if you said, no, she'd say, well, you don't do it here. When they were finally happy with my weight at the clinic in London, I went after A-levels for my eating issues. 
I went to work in a children's shoe shop on Ken High Street, saved up and bought myself a ticket to Bali. One of our childhood friends, Campbell, mummy's friend Paddy Bell's daughter, was living there. Campbell was in the early days of creating her adaptogenic line of mushroom blended supplements. Anyway, I started surfing, doing yoga. I got into my body, even though it was difficult to look at myself, but Campbell didn't have any mirrors in her house, which was helpful. And I met Ray, my husband, and he'd endured many of the same things I had in a way. We both had to face our own toxic trauma response behaviors antithetical to a healthy relationship. We both liked to dance together. But one of the most difficult moments with him was noticing how Ray held his knife when he ate food like a pen. I would wake up in the middle of the night seeing mommy's face if and when she saw Ray using his knife. I had to end it with him actually for a while until I realized the level of cultural brainwashing I'd undergone. Then eventually Ray and I traveled across India and we ate so much food with our hands especially in the ashrams, and um, it was so liberating. Ray and I tried to be the same people we are in private as we are in public. And we tried to model to our own daughter, Ruby, what self-respect looks like, which is love of self and then of others, which I believe is the way each of us can be a part of here humanity, which I think is jolly good manners, actually. Absolutely courageous, courageous. I am in awe of her. She has said the things that so many have wondered, so many have asked, and no one was willing to be as brave as she is. I am in eternal debt to her capacity to relive such such horrible times with someone who she calls mummy but was told not to call mummy anymore because the king it seems gets confused Therefore, she calls her mommy, she calls her now mother, because the king likes to call the queen mommy. I am just in awe of her bravery to discuss and to bring to light satire. I'm not quite sure what that means. I'm sure it means something in one of her Balinesian or one of her, her, her languages that she speaks. Satire is, is, is perhaps, I think, in, in, in the ashram where she, 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 she was there for many, many, many weeks. She learned satire. It's possibly a dance. It's possibly a cleansing, of course, but I am not quite sure. I must say, however, that we are doing our very, very best to secure an interview with the brother. He has just released a cookbook. Oh God, can you imagine the aristocracy? now has to write cookbooks. I don't even know what my kitchen looks like. Oh, the pity. We will secure that interview with her brother soon, I hope, and have him here so he can tell us the awful, horrible, horrible things he's possibly endured. Thank you. And now this. <laughs> no, I can't, I can't, I can't breathe, I can't breathe. What is the worst thing you found on someone else's phone? My oh. husband's wedding day pics with another wife whilst I existed. <laughs> they refer to me as Fat Emma. <laughs> 
I'm going to move on. <laughs> I'm going to move the... F- laugh if you don't... That's your business. I'm moving on. Found a pic of his friend's balls dipped in a cup of yogurt. I'm going to move on. I'm going to move... <laughs> Shut up, because I'm going to move on. Vids of him and another woman calling him Michael. His name is Chris. I'm going to move on. I'm moving on, James. <laughs> A picture of his ex's titty in his mouth. I'm going to move on. A shipment of guns and grenades from Somalia. So I really hope that um, that last uh, clip made you at least smile. Uh, I, <laughs> at the beginning of it, I wasn't quite sure. And as they started to laugh, I started to laugh. And by the end, I was just, it was so contagious. I don't think it even mattered what they were saying. It was just completely contagious the laughter. And uh, they do say that sometimes like if, 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 if you feel a certain way and you want to change your mood, it's to just um, listen to people laughing. And there is, there is another clip of um, a fellow, I, I, I think he's either in the subway or on a bus and he's watching something on his phone or a video on his phone, he has his headset on, and he just starts to laugh, and he starts to laugh, and he's laughing, and then the people next to him start to laugh. They have no idea what he's watching. And then people, and then just these rows of people started smiling and laughing. And um, I just wanted to, I know today's episode is being a little bit um, heavy, uh, one would say, but uh, I wanted to kind of, towards the end, have a little bit of um, laughter for us. But let me tell you something that may make you laugh or not. Uh, I actually am finishing this episode um, <laughs> in the morning. I started last night and um, I started recording at around 11.30 with the idea that hopefully I would be finished by 1 a.m. in the morning and it, I would upload it at, at 1, right, for after dark. So at around 12.30 or so, I started to feel really tired. So I, I was like, okay, you know what? I'll just go and I'll take a quick nap, um, close my eyes a little bit uh, for half an hour or so, get get up and then finish it and, and post it. Well, somehow my alarm went off Somehow I took it off. I don't recall taking it off. And I woke up at like 9 a.m. this morning. <laughs> so I'm like, oh, oh. <laughs> so as you see, the sun is rising. Um, and I finished, or well, I'm finishing the um, episode now. So you will likely. Um, see this episode uh, at around 1 p.m. So hopefully any kind of edits I need to finish with, I'll finish that and um, have it ready for 1 p.m. And hopefully uh, those that are available to come and hang out will be able to come and hang out. Um, thank you for your patience again. Okay, so before, before we go, I wanted to actually one more thing that I wanted to talk about, which is about um, uh, uh, Katie Lee, who has um, well high, highbrow hippie, who the orders that have come in, it's just been she said it's been just incredible, and the entire staff and so on are working around the clock to get the stuff um, 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 out the door. Uh, I think she said the amount of orders that came in in four days, it's it's for like, well, could have been for like a month or uh, more. And they're, they're trying to figure out about international shipping because they've also received a lot of orders for international shipping. 
And uh, she made a comment in regards to uh, they received some nasty notes from um, a certain place abroad. Let's try and guess what what island she's referring to. That is so exciting, right? It's so great. So, 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 so great. And um, here is something that she actually wrote. And this was part of her, um, she has these little mini essays that she writes. And this is something that she wrote about our favorite girl. Espresso Brunette for the Duchess of Sussex by Cuddy Lee. Classic rich espresso brunette for the always elegant Megan, Duchess of Sussex for the Invictus Games 2023. I truly have a soft spot for beautiful brunette hair color. It requires a gentle touch when highlighting or low lighting and adding dimension, and depending on the season can range from deep and striking to glossy and regal. For Megan and the change of season, I relied on heavy low lighting throughout the lengths of her hair, followed by layers of glossing for the ultimate movement and tone-on-tone reflection. The result is healthy, long-lasting, low-maintenance color with superior shine. Megan's hair was styled by herself for the duration of the Invictus Games. Crazy impressive, I know. Congratulations to Prince Harry on another year at the helm of such a wonderful and important event. Isn't that so wonderful? I am so happy um, for all the success that is ahead um, for for her, for her um, company, for the people who have invested. This is just, it's just wonderful. And uh, Megan, Duchess of Sussex, you go girl. I'm just, you know, sometimes it's just the weirdest thing. I feel like, I feel like a proud papa, <laughs> even though I'm not Megan's papa and I couldn't be his papa. But it's, it's just, I, I guess I'm just proud. I, I get really excited at um, when people who deserve this, who've worked so hard, it's, it's, it's rewarded to them, you know, because so often we see people who don't deserve the things that they get, that they that is handed to them. Anyways, I didn't want to end this uh, podcast on a, on a negative. However, do you know who this woman is? Any guesses? Any guesses? I'll give you one clue. She's German. And in the next podcast, you will learn all about her. And if you're asking, should we like her or dislike her? Hmm, well, that's a very good question. I will not say anything. I will let you make that decision. I have already made up my mind. Um, But I will (laughs) let you make that decision. So, If you've got family already over, if you're cooking or getting ready um, to head off, maybe you're the one traveling, please, please, please take care of yourselves. Please be safe. Um, Don't let anyone or anything, anyone or anything interrupt your era of joy and happiness. Don't let it happen. And if you see things that get into you, walk away. Walk away and take deep breath. And remember, you are in control of your emotions. And you will not allow anyone, doesn't matter who it is, anyone to get the best of you or for you to lose control of your emotions. You're beautiful. You are this, that, I was gonna say something. (laughs) You're it. I was gonna gonna say you're the (laughs) S-H-I-T. But then it's like, hang on a minute. Is is that rude? 
just center yourself in your beauty, in your confidence, in your strength, in everything that you are. Don't let anyone else tell you that you're not. Okay? All right. Those, that's with everyone. Those celebrating Thanksgiving and those who are not. And for everyone who listens to this, watches this in whatever country you're in, wherever you are in the world, know that you are enough and that you are so damn powerful that you would never, ever, ever let someone else get the best of you. You show them, okay? All right. Take care of yourselves until we speak again. Love you all. Mwah.